Сега бих искал да покрани госпожа Теодора Кътова, която преподава в хуманитарната гимназия Свети Свети Кирил Методий в Абрят Тобев и в медицински министър в Тобев. Hello, I'm trying to talk in English, so all of us who would understand. Uh, as a colleague introduced myself, my name is Tabila Kutuba and I've uh, finished my bachelor degree in classics two years ago and I've been teaching Latin in uh, Medical University of Plovdiv and from this year I started to try with uh, teaching younger, really young uh, students, ninth, ninth grade, uh, ninth graders to uh, understand Latin. Uh, myself being really young, I've uh, decided to try and uh, give this book familiar manner. I try with uh, students which never uh, have uh, tried any language, even any language with cases. They haven't made with any language has, which has cases in it. And I've decided to try with this textbook because uh, it has awesome exercises and uh, help them with a lot of things. Uh, I, it was really a uh, unique experience for me when I first started with them and they uh, were interested with many things, not only on Latin, but with Roman culture, with everything to do with the uh, Roman civilization. Uh, one of the things I see as a difference in 9 grade from my university uh, teaching is that they need something to as uh, uh, always said we need someone uh, something to be interesting to them not only to translate or to make some sort of exercise but to discuss them to discuss things uh, when we translate some text they ask questions about was it this way in ancient uh, and um, uh, in history for uh, for real uh, what was this the way they were talking to each other and they were, they were asking a lot of questions because one of the most unique things about uh, young students is their curiosity. We have to use their curiosity in our advance because uh, with time some of the curiosity fade away and we could not use it so properly but in this young age we could use their curiosity to see that um, Latin or ancient Greek is not just a language we use just for medical uh, terminology, for law, but we could use it as any language we uh, study, as uh, German, as French, as English, and so on. That's why, as our colleague said from the classic uh, uh, school, that I try to make them make different short exercises, short sentences in Latin, so they can see it, they can use it as a proper language. Uh, I, I don't have much experience yet to uh, share with you, but if you have any question on my experience, you can ask me and I can uh, always answer questions. Thank you very much, Theodora, for such magnificent English. I really appreciate it. So, so thank you so much. Um, yeah, of course I have questions because um, um, I need to tell you this first. Perhaps um, I've always been a, a defender of the Urbeck method, and um, the method is not that well uh, known uh, either in the UK or in, 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 uh, in Flanders. So that's why I um, offered some courses for teachers, so just uh, post-educational training, and uh, I actually did this uh, eight times in Flowers because they kept on asking for it, and I think I reached something like 350 uh, Latin teachers uh, for this. 
Now, this being said, so, so the method is, is, in my view, fantastic. Also, you know that Oeberg actually was um, a Danish man from Denmark. And um, um, children in Denmark, not only do they not know um, cases, but also they do not know about conjugations. So Scandinavian verbs, they're always the same form, whether it is I, you, or he. So he really <laughs> needed to make this clear uh, to his um, uh, students. Now my only, and, and I struggle with this myself, so, so if you don't know the answer to it, it would be perfectly fine because I don't have the answer either. Um, the only difficulty I find for, for teaching this to smaller children is that um, actually this book was conceived first for um, correspondence. So uh, long before the internet, we could do um, education just by letters, so the sort of correspondence um, uh, education. And this was meant for adults. So the, the first thought of Urbeck was um, making this book for adults. Um, so that was my question. I'm absolutely sure, as many examples of this, that it can work very well for children too. But don't you find it um, sometimes too slow? That is, they repeat and repeat a lot, and, and perhaps the plot is not that let's say, not that spectacular, it's okay, but it's not really, yeah? and it needs a lot of effort of the teacher itself to make it attractive. And so once again, I struggle with this too, so it's not a critic at all. I wonder how you uh, view it. Well, uh, I think the whole teaching has to be uh, some sort of struggle for the teacher always to give mm -hmm. uh, their best. Well, there where it's a repetitive part of the text, we could just give it as a separate thing, they just to summarize it in our language, I intend to do it, or just to try them to do it as a homework, for example. And about the not so interesting plots, I tend to um, reimagine them, to make them more modern. Uh, for example, some unit where it was about uh, some of the some of the, or some, one of the um, characters went to see their girlfriend. <laughs> we discussed that and they were interested. I just try to connect it with nowadays um, situation, so I, it could, could be interesting for them. Yeah. Yes, that, I think that's a very good way to go. First of all, I always told my teach, teachers, so the one who came to the training, don't think that you have to read from A to Z, from page 1 to page 300. Of course, you can summarize things. You can say, uh, read this at home, or you just say what is in it, and, or you just do a colloquium, like like uh, also wrote these dialogues, so just do it with, with so. So I think that's a very good solution. I'm, I'm very glad that you also mentioned the, well, some people criticize the methods because um, mm -hmm. some scenarios are very stereotypical, like the man-wife relationship and so on and so on. But there I would say this is very good because it captures the Roman mentality. It's very much about a Roman mentality and of course it's up to us teachers to sort of compare with the present and I think, and of course you may disagree with me, but, but I think that we should not impose our own values on ancient texts. So if this is sort of old-fashioned to us, let it be and it's up to you as a teacher to, to discuss this. So I think that's a, a very good approach, absolutely. Of course, the, those texts are not about nowadays people and we discuss it with the students that this uh, uh, behavior towards women, for example, is not nowadays because it's something which happens in Roman uh, civilization, and, but, but they could see the differences, and I think it's helpful for them to not only know the language, but history and culture as well as that, and mm -hmm. some sort. Okay, thank you for the question. Please, thank you. Does someone else want to ask something? Uh, how, what, is the, what is the pace of uh, learning? 
So how many chapters from uh, in your run? Uh, ah, until, until, until now we've up to chapter 7. We're not going really quickly because we want to discuss uh, different things, but it has to be interesting for them. That's when uh, we sum it up, it has to be interesting for them. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How many hours per week do you have? Uh, two hours. Two hours, one day. Uh, yes. Okay. If they're not this pretty? I actually have no clue how old these students are. Is this a uh, high school? Uh, I think they are 15, 16 years old. This, the, those two ages are for uh, my graders and uh, as all of us know, uh, it's one of the moments where puberty hits mostly. So uh, them being interested in that is really unique because you know when children are in puberty, mostly different things interested in them. Okay. 